Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the I Thrive Podcast. It's your boy, Sonny Esperance. Today, I have with me Mr. Walt Hayer. Um, Hi. Walt, uh, uh, how are you doing, Walt? Hi, good. It's actually higher, H-E-Y-E-R, higher. Oh, higher, Walt higher. Sorry, sorry. Thank That's you for right. correcting me. <laughs> Walt higher, everybody. Um, for those of you who do not know who Walt higher was, um, about a year ago, I'd say, there was a, a documentary I watched. Uh, it was like a BT documentary on people who were transgender and who retract. So who were born male, uh, transgendered to a female, but then went back to being male. Walt uh, higher is uh, one of the ones that was born male and uh, transgendered to a woman, but retract and became back to his original form. So Walt Hare, without further ado, um, please just tell us uh, uh, how it all began. Yeah, well, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, my grandmother, uh, when she was babysitting me, uh, started cross-dressing me as a girl, mm -hmm. and uh, I enjoyed it. You know, I was four years old, uh, so what does a four-year-old kid know? I mean, not much. You're going to kind of do whatever your grandma says you're, you're doing. You know, it's all seems like fun and games. It seems very harmless, uh, but it's not harmless at all. Cross-dressing a four-year-old kid as a girl it causes emotional and psychological harm uh, that will last a lifetime. And so that you don't realize it, though. It took me 50 years after your grandma started cross-dressing me to realize what damage she had done to me by cross-dressing me at the age of four. Uh, he, she affirmed me. She told me how cute I looked, how wonderful I was, and all that. And, and you know, we need to realize young children, uh, their, their brains are ready for any kind of information we give them. They don't have any preconceived ideas about what the world is all about. Adults are going to feed them this information. And in my grandmother's case, she fed me the wrong information. She it did this affirmation. She told me how cute I looked. She should have been telling me what a nice looking boy I was and how handsome I was and how proud of me she was as a little boy instead of dressing me up as a girl. Uh, she didn't realize what harm she was causing. Now I'm 79 years old. Oh. So that's 75 years ago. So I've got 75 years ex of experience mm -hmm. to tell you and your audience this is very much uh, harmful to young children. It's child abuse. It should not be allowed. Parents who do this to their kids should be aware of what kind of harm they're causing them. Yeah. It, what's crazy, you know, uh, today it's supposed to be like a, a normal thing. Whereas if a boy is wearing a wig or dress or lipstick or makeup, it, it's normal. Uh, what's the problem with it? This is how today is. We're in 2020 and all blah, blah. But uh, speaking towards your grandmother, like where were your parents during all this? Well, usually this happened at grandma's house when my parents were gone for the weekend. They usually, about every other weekend, they would go away and they would drop me at grandma's house. Grandma would, she was a seamstress. She made me this purple chiffon dress. But grandma told me this was a secret. And so any, any of us know that when, you know, as we grow up and learn later in life, secrets mean there's something wrong, yeah. you know. We keep secrets because it's not going to be approved by everybody, you know. Yeah. And so uh, this was our little secret that we kept for two and a half years. And once my parents found out about uh, what grandma was doing, I was not allowed to go back to grandma's house. But the damage was already done. Done. Okay. And, and so, you know, uh, that implanted in me this whole idea about gender confusion who was I should have should I have been a girl was I born in the wrong body all these different things you know this was 1944 yeah. we didn't have the term gender dysphoria or transgenderism I was just a boy confused by what grandma did today parents and and teachers and all these uh, therapists are just confusing kids every day mm -hmm. and of course I in my personal view from all the emails I get from people with regret uh, these therapists who encourage young children to cross dress and get a new identity should be, uh, they should lose their license to practice. They're, yeah. they're really quacks and it should be considered medical malpractice. Yeah. Was your parents um, any way or any, in any form religious? Was there God in your house or was it just here and there? Yeah, no, <clears throat> you know, I grew up, my, my grandfather was actually a, a pastor. 
Okay. Uh, my dad's dad was a pastor. Oh, so it wasn't the it wasn't uh, your grandmother's husband, the one that was giving you. Okay, okay. So that's from your dad's no. side. Right. So. so Right. So, uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, faith, a lot of church, uh, but, you know, a four-year-old kid doesn't get all this stuff, yeah. you know, and, and my parents didn't know about what was happening for two and a half years. And when they found out the damage had already been done, and then my dad is trying to figure out, you know, it's in 1940s, he's trying to figure out what do I do mm -hmm. with what my grand, what, what my mother-in-law did to my mm -hmm. son, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so, so he's struggling. I mean, he's a good man. He had a good heart. Uh, he loved his two boys, uh, but he didn't like what grandma had done to me, for sure. And mm -hmm. so, you know, in his own way, he was trying to, you know, help me, uh, you know, become a man. So his discipline got a little bit more strident and so forth. But um, and, but what really happened was that his brother, his adopted brother, who was a teenager, you know, was not um, in his right mind. Let me say he was adopted because he had some issues in his life and because they were a family of faith they adopted this young guy uh, who wasn't quite right right and so he started sexually molesting me because he heard that grandma was putting me in a dress so if if grandma hadn't made the purple dress and dressed me up mm. my uncle never would have molested me yeah, yeah. but so you, you see what people don't seem to get is that there's consequences to doing things to young children mm -hmm. that last a lifetime. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been molested. I wouldn't have been put in a, this silly dress that, you know, all of a sudden I felt like, you know, I was getting all the attention. I mean, when, when young children become the focus of everybody's attention because they're quote transgender, you know, everybody just loves it, right? I mean, they think it's cute. They don't realize they are doing serious, psychological, emotional, and in many cases, sexual damage to these young people that will they'll never get over. Yeah. So take us to like the the what was going in your mind when you decided to uh, transition. So what what did you just wake up one day and said, you know what, I want to you know become a transgender? Take us back to exactly well, yeah. what was in the mind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, keep in mind now, I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm an, I went and worked on the Apollo space missions. I was an associate design engineer. I'd gotten married. You know, that's one of the things that people don't understand that people who identify as transgender, the vast majority of them aren't homosexual. I was never homosexual. Okay. It's just a, it's just an issue of identity. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's not an issue of sexuality. Okay. I mean, the people who are homosexual are actually, Actually, the drag queens, you heard those, that terminology. The yeah. drag queens are the homosexuals. The transgender identifying people are often not homosexual at all. They're heterosexual men who struggle with their identity because something happened to them in their early childhood. But everybody treats them like they are homosexual. So I was not homosexual. I was married, had two children. And in my late 30s, because I continued to struggle with this, I went to one of those LGBT therapists who had a gender clinic. You know, he was a gender therapist. And so he told me, well, what you need is hormone therapy and you need to transition because you have gender dysphoria. So, you know, he's an expert, right? So he tells me, I'm, I'm now 38, 39 years old. He says, you need hormones. You need to, you know, leave your wife. You need to adopt your female identity and you need to get on with life. So this was in 19... Uh, 81. So I started on hormones in 1981. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, I actually transitioned uh, surgically in 1983 and uh, became Laura Jensen. And I became, uh, within a few months of that, I lost my job. I became homeless um, and was struggling to um, make ends meet. I ended up living in a park uh, in Long Beach, California as a homeless person uh, because I had no place to turn. So, you know, I eventually, um, you know, I began to crawl my way back. Uh, I became an alcoholic uh, trying to deal with life. I started going to AA meetings. Um, I finally got a circle of friends from AA. One of them let me stay in his garage. He wouldn't let me in the house because I was too scary. So yeah. they put me, he allowed me to stay in his garage with the turtles and the cats, you know. 
So, um, you know, I started, you know, to sort of crawl my way back, but it took many years. So um, I then, uh, you know, over a period of time, I, I ended up uh, meeting a pastor and he let me stay in his house. He let me, you know, he sort of brought me up with his family and I began going to church um, in a different way. I was looking at God in a different way. I went to recovery house and I started working on my sobriety. And from the recovery house, I went to church that accepted me as Laura Jensen, female. They, you know, the pastor knew the pastor that I was living with. They knew each other, the pastor of the church. Okay. And so, uh, you know, they sort of let me work through all this stuff. And Dr. Uh, Jeff Farrar was the pastor there and he became a good priest. Still a good friend of mine today. So. Um, so in that experience, the pastor also set me up with a, a Christian therapist who became my sidekick, sort of, that allowed me to meet him anytime to talk about issues I was having. And so I began this, this kind of dual recovery or triple threat recovery. Really, I'm recovering from alcoholism. I have a therapist, but I'm going to church. So you have these three entities that all became, you know, kind of the centerpiece to me finding my way back because sobriety is absolutely essential. Jesus Christ is essential and having really good therapy, somebody who can help you deal with being sexually abused, being cross-dressed unnecessarily and being diagnosed improperly. You know, the, the truth is that nobody needs hormones and surgery. I didn't. Mm -hmm. This is all absolute nonsense. Yeah. And so uh, once you realize that and, you know, during that time, I also took the surgeon and the counselor who told me I needed hormones and, and the therapist, the surgeon to court and asked them to prove to me in California Superior Court that they can actually change a man into a woman. And guess what? They couldn't do it. They mm -hmm. said, it's, it's not possible yeah. either medically, surgically, scientifically, biologically, or hormonally to change a man into a woman. I said, well, why are you signing these certificates and changing my birth record if you can't do it? So I got my birth record reversed. So you begin to see how, how this whole thing is such a big fraud and, yeah. and the damage that it's doing. So, you know, through prayer and through working with another therapist, um, the Lord came to me and um, he actually, I could, I actually saw him come and hold me, and, and that was my redemption and restoration. It's in my book, uh, Transgender's Faith, uh, and it's a great book. People should, uh, if they want to hear my testimony, they should read about it. But, um, but you know, that's, that's where I came back through this whole process. The Lord came to me and pulled me out of this insane madness, as they call transgenderism, that is only harmful to people, but it, it was, it, I was 50 years old before I actually got out of it. It took me 46 years yeah. to dig my way out of this. Wow. And a lot of people aren't that lucky, you know, but, you know, I wrote a, a book that yeah. people should really read. This Trans is an excellent, survivors. this book, anybody who has any interest in this subject, needs to read that book. I'm serious. And where can the, that, where that can we purchase that is book? It's the latest, greatest book. I had a psyche, Amazon. Amazon. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. I had one psychiatric doctor. I gave the book to, to ask him what he thought of it. And he himself bought 700 copies to give to other psychiatric doctors because they said people need to read this book. Wow. And he wanted the therapist to have this book so that they could see the harm that's being done by transitioning people. So there's a lot of people out there who are, are, be, are, 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 are were messed up to the point where uh, went to a, um, a psychologist or whoever, uh, you know, to have a conversation with them and hear the psychologist is providing them hormones and stuff to transition. So there's a, there's a lot of people like this. Thousands, literally thousands, thousands of them. Oh, wow. It's a mess. Crazy. It's a mess. And so, and that's, and, and actually transitioning people, you know, is what's causing them to commit suicide. They're, if you transition, you're 18 times more likely to die by suicide than you are if you don't. 
And, and that's because they're not addressing the issues that cause them to not like who they are. I mean, the idea of changing genders is because what you're saying is, I don't like me. Yeah. But why don't you like me? Yeah, yeah. It's not because, you know, you're born in the wrong body. It's be, in my case, it was because I was sexually molested by somebody. It was because I was cross-dressed by somebody. And it's because no one actually dealt with a crime that my uncle did to me. The guy should have been put in jail. Yeah. Nobody put me into therapy and, and allowed me to deal with being um, you know, inappropriately touched. I mean, that's destructive stuff. Everything mm -hmm. that happened to me, basically from the time I was four to nine years old was mm -hmm. totally destructive. Yeah. That's wow. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a tough and traumatizing childhood. Uh, in, in terms of, um, you know, the LGBT community today, what do you think? Cause today it, it's, 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 as you can see, it's a mess kids now. And a lot of, you know, celebrity kids. And what I want to speak on mainly cause I watch um, basketball, um, NBA, um, Dwayne Wade, his son, uh, uh, who was, I believe named Zion came out and calling himself Zion. When you see stuff like that, Kids now saying to their parents, mom, dad, I, I'm not a boy. I don't feel like a boy. I'm a she. You know, what, when you see stuff like that, what, what goes through your mind? Well, you know, you know, years ago, these things ha have been happening throughout the history of mankind. You know, kids have always, like, they look at themselves, they see a sister, they see a female, if they're a guy. You know, kids are curious, you know. Curiosity is really important for children to have. What is really devastating is for a parent to allow them to think that they can become somebody else or that they are somebody else. Parents need to, you know, in the old days, the parents would just say, ah, you know, you're curious about that. Don't worry about it. You're a man. You can't change. And, you know, keep in mind, this has only been in the last maybe 10 years that we've seen this, maybe the last five years where it's kind of exploded. This has not been something that's been going on. We're plant, we're actually manufacturing transgender kids by, by parents saying, oh, well, you can just pick your gender. Well, that's nonsense. It's absolute insanity. And so uh, it, it makes me sick because I know that child, no matter who it is, is going to suffer because of that. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have a happy life. They're, they're going to have... <clears throat> all this fun and this adulation and many of the parents who do this allow their children to change they think they're the brightest people in the world they think they're very woke they're sharp you know they're cool and they, they go like you know some parents run around with a real fancy dog and go to the coffee shop right well now parents are parading around their trans kid like they're brilliant because mm -hmm. they have a trans kid I'm, I'm i'm a smarter parent if i have a transgender kid than if I don't have a transgender kid. That's how insane. So it upsets me that parents are letting this happen to their children and, and not dealing with why they think that they're a different gender. So now obviously, you know, <clears throat> you've, done, you've done the process, you've done the surgery and all that. Uh, I don't know if it's a part of your testimony, but uh, what, what, when, when the day came where you were going to like retract, uh, um, de what was going through your mind at that time? Well, you know, once the Lord came to me and I'd been sort of working through all the things, I'd come to the Lord and said, you know, I'm, I, I admit to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Say, the doctor showed me that they couldn't change me. What I did was wrong. And I, I confessed that I was wrong in allowing a man, a surgeon, to decide what my gender is. Only person who decides who your gender is, is the Lord Jesus Christ, God. And your gender and sex is fixed at conception, period. It's unchangeable, end of story. You can't change it. So when I realized that, I began to, you know, start identifying again as well I realized that you know I needed to have my implants that I had for breast taken out I had to do some other things change my hormone therapy and get back to male hormones do the things that are necessary to reclaim the life mm -hmm. that I gave to a surgeon I, I basically walked in and gave the surgeon and said here you, you you're responsible for my gender how insane is that yeah. you know and so once I realized that 
I don't need to turn my life over to anybody but the Lord Jesus Christ and, and walk with Jesus. I'm not going to walk with that silly surgeon who carved me up like I was a piece of meat. Because the only thing he's doing is, is making money so he can pay for his Mercedes Benz payments. Absolutely, absolutely. And and today, you know, and it's 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 wonderful to hear because uh people like yourself, you're so hidden in the LGBT community. This is like people like you are from the LGBT community, they don't want you to be seen, they don't want your voice to be heard, they want it to make us seem because over here, because I'm in Canada, and in Canada it's it's become crazy. Parents are are taking their kids out of public schools because in in fear of sending their son to schools and their son's coming back in a dress, lipstick, and a wig. They're even putting the, the, the flag in the schools, stuff that has nothing to do with education, right? But obviously, if it was to put God in the school, whereas maybe say, hey, can we put a Bible verse there? All of a sudden, rejection is there. All of a sudden, it's, it's a big problem. We can't allow that. Now, you know, it, it, it does upset me and it does frustrate me in terms of parents who decide to condone Kids, I'm talking about kid, like five, six years old, telling their parents, like that I could be this or I, I'm this and that, and parents encouraging p- people who straight people or, or people that are, are out there and all other celebrities, whatever the case is, that this is the route we're supposed to take. If your son comes to you and says that uh, um, he is a girl, you have to accept that, love them for being a girl, and start calling them sh- like it's crazy. They, they, they don't even call their sons he. Now it's to the point where it's she. And then today, obviously, you know, God made two genders, male yeah. and female. Well, it, it, but today it became so crazy where the LGBT community says there's so many genders. There's, there's multiple genders. And so, so in terms of what would you say, you know, uh, if the LGBT community is watching right now or people who want to transition or people who have transitioned, what is the message you would like to give them today right now? Yeah, well, the LGBT has come a, become a sexual cult. And, and as such, they are trying to recruit people. And for every child that they can stuff with hormone blockers or convince that they're a different gender, they've gained another person into the cult. They're trying to build this cult movement. And people need to realize that there are people like George Soros and others who are funding all this insanity. Yeah. And People also need to realize that it's going to do harm to them, just like all cults do. Eventually, this whole thing runs out. And we're 20 years from now, you and others are going to be talking about this and going, man, what a big mistake we did by allowing this into schools. This rainbow flag should not be in schools. The rainbow flag shouldn't be hanging from police departments and government buildings either. You know. God made male and female, end of story. There aren't 50 or 70 or 100 genders. You can't make up your genders. Surgeons can't change your gender with hormones and surgery. So the, the insanity is really in the community of the LGBT people. And, and in this book, as a matter of fact, in this book, Trans Life Survivors, mm-hmm. is, is a girl from Canada who transitioned with all of the fanfare, they got all the acceptance in the world and was put in charge of a transgender center Mm. and given all this authority. Everybody loved this person in that LGBT community. You know what happened to her? She committed suicide. Wow. So the idea that if you're accepted by the community that you're going to be okay is total nonsense. Mm. People will come to the point of realization that they realize deep down in their heart, they know they made a mistake and it ain't working for them. And maybe it's going to happen at 5, 15, 20, or 25 years. But that moment of regret is going to set in and they're going to realize that somebody took their life from them and it was the LGBT and this whole transgender movement nonsense. And that's what it really is. It's total nonsense. A lot of people making big money off of this and now it's become more of a political thing. Yep. than it is a medical thing. It's much more political than it is medical. Uh-huh. And in terms of um, the church today, because a lot of churches have failed because they've accepted, you know what, it's okay to be uh, you know, LGBT, 
Uh, you can still go to heaven and, and all this. Um, God loves what you're doing. He still will take you and all this. In terms of the church, you know, how, what, what, what is it that, that you, what's your say on that? The church is accepting the LGBT community and saying that yeah. they could remain well, the way they are and still are going to heaven. Okay, well, there's two things. One, churches should definitely accept people who are struggling with their identity and who identify as transgender into the church. That's where they need to be. Yeah. That's where they need to be. Absolutely. Secondly, however, they, the churches need to tell them that you will not inherit the Holy Spirit into your life until you come clean and realize that you can't be a true transgender and a Christian at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the only people that are going to inherit the Holy Spirit into their life are the people who denounce transgenderism and go and detransition and walk with Jesus Christ. You're either going to walk with the LGBT or you're going to walk with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the only place the Holy Spirit exists is with Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And in terms of uh, detransitioning, how many people have contacted you claiming they want to detransition? Is it a, sh a low number or a high one? Um, in the thousands. In the thousands. That is just crazy. And so f today, uh, you know, you obviously your voice for the people who have transitioned and who want to transition, uh, uh, detransition. Um, in terms of yourself, how is life for you today, considering all that you've been through? You know, I mean, 79 years old today. Like, what, what's, what is, what, what's, what's life for Walt today? Yeah. Well, I've got, you know, the, the ministry is called sexchangeregret.com. Mm -hmm. I've published seven books. All of them are great books. Um, I'm married now for 23 years. Wow. Well, and, and to a beautiful lady, a real lady, <laughs> one that God made, you know, <laughs> the real thing. And, uh, <laughs> So, you know, and, and I've, I've got a great life, you know, and I, I, you know, there's nothing more exciting that anybody can do than to be walking with people who are struggling with their life. And I'm helping them reclaim their life and get their life back. And that's what the website does. People contact me through the website. They want to detransition. And we find ways for them to either get into counseling or get whatever help they need, whether it's in many cases, it's legal help, you know, to get their birth certificate restored or their driver's license restored. So I, my life actually is, is sort of a storybook. I mean, because I am, you know, this is kind of hard to say, but I've actually saved people from committing suicide. And I've saved people from going down this path of transgenderism. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this is, there's just the greatest calling to be able to serve the Lord in this way, in a special, unique way, because there are very few people who are out there who are willing to stand in the gap for Jesus and say, you know, if you had the surgery and you changed your identity and you're suffering because nobody will help you, contact me. We will find help for you. Oh, wow, that's, that's, that's wonderful. But at the same time, what is the percentage of the suicide rate for people who have transitioned? Well, according to one of the greatest studies right now, they, you're 18 times more likely to commit suicide. They, the, the biggest number that's been thrown around is like, it's a little over 40% will attempt suicide. Uh, because of what they've gone through. But we got to realize that many of these people become alcoholics. They become drug addicts. Um, they're prostituting themselves on the streets. They, they, have, uh, they take very high-risk behaviors that they engage in. And so they're, they're putting themselves, because they, they really hate who they are. And once we can reclaim their life so that they can begin to love themselves again, they can find their way back to the restoration that the Lord Jesus Christ has for them, redemption and restoration. I've worked with every kind of uh, religious group there is, Muslims from, you know, Jewish people uh, and people who 
don't even believe in God have contacted yeah. me and I've helped them detransition. I don't just work with people who you know, have faith in Christ. I'll work with anybody and I'll help them detransition. And, and if in the process of that, they find Jesus, that's wonderful. But yeah. I don't deny help to anybody, no matter who they are, where they came from. I reach people at 180 countries around the world and we reach over 300 million people each year. Wow. So when you say like Muslim, Jewish, and, and those communities, so there's people in that community that heavily, uh, you know, transition as well? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've had them from Iran, Iraq. Um, I, I've had them from all these different places. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I know there's certain countries where, like, you could literally get killed. If, if, yeah, if, ex- absolutely. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So, and, and they're hiding, you know, and they're struggling for many reasons. But what, what I allow them to realize is that you, you don't need to hide. You just need to understand how you got there. And I work with people that find out what caused them to not like who they are. That's the key thing. There's, I always ask them, what happened that caused you to not like who you are? And it gets them to think. It's like, well, you know, when did this happen? Because you're not born transgender. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's a, it happens oftentimes during childhood. Something happens in childhood. That maybe the father was abusive. Maybe the father was an alcoholic. Maybe the father died. Maybe the father wasn't there. Who knows? I mean, there's, I, I, the, the list is just exhaustive on how many reasons that people decide they don't like who they are. Maybe they look at their father and their father's a, you know, a very abusive, reckless person. And they're a guy and they go, I don't want to be like my father. My mom looks nice to me. I'd rather be like my mom. Yeah. And so when, when we start working through what caused them to think these things and they realize why they did it, then they begin to go, oh, okay. Now that I understand this, I can begin to love who I am yeah. and, and redeem my life that was lost. Yeah, yeah. What was the most common answers when you would ask the people that transitioned what happened to you? What's the most common answer did you get? Sex abuse. Sex abuse. And from a close uh, family member? Uh, from close family members, relatives, neighbors. Um, and it, and it, it goes across the board with both female and male. Oh, and so why is it? Because there's, there's a lot that have been, you know, out there that have been, you know, raped and abused. You know, grow up still able to, you know, remain, uh, 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 not transition and stuff. But... What, like as you, because you were uh, someone that was abused, what, what happened psychologically to your mind when, while it's happening? Like what's going on? Yeah, well, you know, everybody's going to react to trauma in a different way. Yeah, yeah. But I deal with the people who reacted to it in a way where they, you know, this popularity of finding acceptance in the transgender community becomes quite easy. But we also have people who uh, have been sexually abused that become anorexic or or they cut themselves, you know, that's, they, they end up cutting themselves, they self-abuse. Um, you know, this is just one of the ways that people deal with being sexually abused. Uh, I would say that nearly half of the people who have contacted me, they were sexually touched inappropriately, or they were involved in pornography, um, parents watching them. It's it, just very sick, bizarre stuff. Crazy. Well, 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 uh, um, honestly, it's, it's, it was a true person. I don't know if you have any, any, any message to anybody who is, um, going through this or any message to, of uh, you know, like motivation to help people who are going through this to finish off. Yeah, I do. Uh, go to my website, sexchangeregret.com. Look at the stories, read the information. And Trans get, Life Survivors. Get that book. Perfect. You need that book because it has it's chock full of information and it has 30 stories by people who have contacted me to tell their stories, why they did it, and how they came back. But it also has the, the one about the girl in Canada who committed suicide. Perfect, perfect. Well, hopefully there is. Uh, are there any other ones in Canada that have transitioned and detransitioned? Um, none that are willing to come out. Oh, so a lot are still, they don't want people no. to know. Oh, wow. 99% of the people don't want anybody to know. Okay, 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 okay. I see, I see. Well, all right, uh, Mr. Walt, it was a, a true pleasure 
for having you on the show. Those of you who are watching, once again, about the hair transition and the transition, thanks be to God, uh, of understanding that we, we, he was originally born in. Um, uh, I will leave the link in the description below on the video. Uh, say, uh, what's the website again? sexchangeregret.com sexchangeregret.com I also try to get the link for where you could purchase his book Trans Life Survivors those of you if you have any questions concerns or anything feel free to hit me at sundin.esperance at ithrive.ca this uh, podcast was uh, to inform those who are going through real life situations. It wasn't in no form to discriminate anybody or to send anything to kill or to harm anybody at all of the LGBT community. This was to educate the young people and the parents, the damages that you can do to kids when you're, when you know, you put them through situations that make them want to transition to a different gender where it's, it's complete nonsense, right? So once again, Walt, I truly, I truly thank you very much for uh, coming on the show. I am really appreciated of it. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. You take care. Hopefully, maybe there could be uh, some more we could talk about in the future for sure. But I'm truly, truly grateful for you for coming on my show today. Uh, uh, may God be with you. May God preserve you. And may you continue to be able to help those thousands out there um, to detransition and go back to their original form that God uh, made them as. Thank you very thank you. much. My my pleasure. Thank you. All right. You take care.